Van D, a dynamic leader with decades of experience building companies and crushing sales. He's been there and done that. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, my name is Van D. Inspiring audiences across the country to do it too. Here's Van. Well, welcome to the Van D podcast. I'm so glad that you're joining me today. You know, I do these podcasts not not just for people that want to improve, but in business, but in life in general. Obviously, you're tuning into my podcast because you know that I have the ability to help you get from point A to point B, just like I did myself. And I'm excited to talk to you today about a subject called the do's and don'ts of being mentally strong in business. Now, this can also apply to your personal life. But mentally strong, really think about that. What does that mean to be mentally strong? The only person on this planet that can help you create the right mindset to open yourself up to opportunities is you. You are the one that decides if you're mentally strong or not. But what I want to talk to you about today is some of the don'ts of being mentally strong. And this is stuff that you can practice uh, at home. You can practice anywhere you want. So you don't have to have a lot of people up, um, with you. And if you're, if you're quarantined at home with the pandemic going on or whatever it might be, this is stuff that you can work on. So let's talk about the do's and don'ts of being mentally strong. So one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to feel like the world owes you something. We like to think that if we put in enough hard work or tough it out through bad times, then we deserve success. But waiting for the world to give you what you think you're owed isn't a productive life strategy. You, you need to take notice of times when you feel as though you deserve something better intentionally focus on all that you have to give rather than what you think you deserve. Regardless of whether you think you've been dealt a fair hand in life, you have gifts to share with others. Don't ever get in the mindset that the world owes you something because you're doing everything right. Another thing is don't expect immediate results. Self-growth develops slowly. It doesn't happen overnight. Whether you're trying to shed your procrastination tendencies, it could be in your personal life, you're trying to improve your marriage. Expecting instant results will lead to disappointment. You got to think about your efforts as, as a marathon. It's not a sprint. You're in this for the long haul. These things that you're teaching yourself are going to stay with you forever. It's not a quick fix. So when you have bumps in the road, view these as minor setbacks rather than a total roadblock. You'll need all the mental strength you can muster up at some point in your life, whether it's the loss of a loved one, a financial hardship, or major health problem. Mental strength will give you the resilience to push you through the challenges. Another is don't be afraid to be alone. I want to tell you something. I've learned more about myself by spending time alone and not having to have people with me all the time. Just to reflect, to meditate a little bit about what I expect out of myself. You should embrace being alone. Matter of fact, embrace it so much that schedule it. Put in your Put in your calendar, maybe you mark out five minutes a day of just being alone. I want to tell you something. Solitude can sometimes feel unproductive. For some people, the thought of being alone with their thoughts is scary. Most people avoid silence by filling their days with a flurry of activity and background noise. However, I'm telling you, Alone time is essential. And remember, those of you that have listened to my many, many podcasts or heard me speak in public, I only 
give you advice on what I've experienced myself. And I'm telling you, alone time, thinking about your past, reflecting reflecting your past on how you want to change your future, whether it business or personal, alone time is a is a benefit, not a detriment. Another don't that you don't want to do to be mentally strong is don't give up after the first failure. Take a look at all the successful people in the world. I mean, if you study all these people you admire and all these successful people that you see out in the world, you're going to notice one common thing that they all have experienced. They've all failed. Some of them failed greatly. Some of them failed a hundred times. So some people avoid failure at all costs because it, it, because it unravels your sense of self-worth. Not trying at all or giving up after your first attempt will really prevent you from reaching your full potential. Don't give up after the first failure. Keep pushing. Almost every story about a wildly successful person starts with tales of repeated failures. And here's one that we all know. Thomas Edison. He literally had thousands of failures before he invented the light bulb. I think he did pretty good staying on course to create something so efficient and effective and necessary. Another thing is, don't resent other people's successes. Well, I tell you what, I've had a storied career. I've had a fairy tale career. And I can always tell people that aren't in my camp. When they, you can tell if they resent my success. It makes me feel bad for them because I've never bragged to them. But it makes me feel bad that people I care about resent my success. Don't resent other people's successes. Watching a coworker receive a promotion, or if you're hearing a friend talk about their latest achievement, or seeing a family member buy a new car that you can't afford, it can stir up feelings of envy. envy. But jealousy shifts the focus from your efforts and interferes with your ability to reach your goals. I want to tell you what, jealousy is one of the worst things that you can experience in your life. It's so hard to overcome when people are jealous of you. You know what I do? I avoid them because I don't know what to do. I've never made them feel bad. It's just that they resent my success and they're jealous of me. I avoid them because I don't know. I just don't know what to do. Another thing is, is write down your definition of success. When you secure that definition, you'll stop resenting others for attaining their goals and you'll stay committed to reaching yours. Recognize that when other people reach their goals, their accomplishments don't minimize your achievements. It has nothing to do with your life. So what I do, when I hear about somebody that's been successful, I see them in the paper or whatever, sometimes I'll write a handwritten note and say, congratulations. There's nothing better than to, uh, than to tell somebody, congratulations, or that you recognize the success that they've had. Very important. Another don't is don't repeat the same mistakes. Do not repeat your same mistakes. Whether you felt embarrassed when you gave the wrong answer in a class or you were scolded for messing up, you may have learned from a young age that mistakes are bad. So you may hide or excuse your mistakes to bury the shame associated with them. So, and doing so will prevent you from learning from them. Learn from your mistakes. Whether you gained back the weight that you worked hard to lose or you forgot an important deadline, view each misstep or mistake as an opportunity for growth. Set aside your pride and humbly evaluate why you goofed up in the first place. Use that knowledge to move forward than you did before. I want to tell you something. I've learned more from my mistakes and my failures, and it has helped me accomplish 
what I set out to do because I know what I don't want to do, and I know I don't want to make the same mistake twice. Another thing is the, do, the do's and don'ts of being mentally strong in business. The don't is don't dwell on the past. While learning from our past helps us build mental strength, ruminating is harmful. Constantly questioning our past choices or romanticizing about the good old days, they'll keep you both from enjoying the present and making the future as good as it can be. So, so make, make peace with the past. Sometimes doing so will involve forgiving someone who hurts you. Sometimes and other times moving forward means letting go of regret. Rather than reliving your past, walk through and work through the painful emotions that kept you stuck. Don't dwell on the past. And I tell this to people all the time in my audiences. Don't forget the past. Learn from your mistakes. Learn from what you did wrong. So reflect on the past, but don't dwell on the past. And another thing that we don't do when we're mentally strong and we're trying to be everything in our potential is we don't fear taking risks. So if something seems scary, obviously you may not take the risk, even a small one. But on the contrary, if you're excited about a new opportunity, you may overlook a giant risk and forge ahead. Emotions cloud your judgment and interfere with your ability to accurately calculate risk. You know, In my book, you can't become extraordinary without taking chances. But a successful outcome depends on your ability to take the right risks. Look at me, ladies and gentlemen. At age 23, I got in a straight commission business, and I had no savings, very little. I had to take a risk. I didn't have to, but I chose to. Because I knew that in order to accomplish what I want to accomplish in life, I can't go down the easiest path. I had to take a risk. Acknowledge how you're feeling about a certain risk and recognize how your emotion influences your thoughts. So before you take this risk, create a list of the pros and cons of the risk. This will help you make a decision based on a balance of emotion and logic. It really will. When you have something to look at, it's a track to run on. It gives you an idea of what does this look like if you take this risk. Another don't in being mentally strong is don't worry about pleasing everyone. That was a habit of mine. I want to tell you something. I wanted everybody to love me. I, I didn't want I didn't want to upset anybody. I wanted everybody to love me. I I wanted to please everybody. So, you know, whether you're nervous that your father-in-law will criticize your latest endeavor or you attend an event you'd rather skip to avoid a guilt trip from your mother, trying to make other people happy drains your mental strength and causes you to lose sight of your goals. It really does. Please yourself. Make sure that what you're doing is you are pleasing what's important to you. You know why? Because everybody will benefit. If you're taking care of you, everybody will benefit. Make choices. Make good choices. Because making choices that disappoint or upset others takes courage. But living an authentic like authentic lot <clears throat> making choices The disappoint or upset others takes courage. But living an authentic life requires you to act according to your values. Write down your top five values, your top five, and focus your energy on staying true to them, even when your choices aren't met with favor and other people aren't in your camp. It's okay not to please everybody. Another thing that 
mentally strong people do not do is we don't shy away from change. If you worry that change is going to make things worse, you'll stay stuck in your old ways. You just will. The world is changing daily, and your success depends on your ability to adapt. So the more you practice tolerating distress from various sources, perhaps taking on a new job, maybe you're leaving an unhealthy relationship, the more confident you become in your ability to adapt and create positive change in yourself is going to benefit you. I look at changing as a good thing. I can't tell you how much I've changed from my 20s to my 30s, 40s, and I'm going to stop there, 50s, and so on. I have changed. I change all the time. And, and, and really, it's not like I'm trying to. It's just that certain things excite me and that didn't excite me before or things that used to excite me or that I wanted to be part of. I don't feel the same need anymore. Embrace change. Mentally strong people do not shy away from change. Another that mentally strong people don't do is we don't give away our power. We don't give away our power. You can't feel like a victim and be a mentally strong person. That's impossible. If your thoughts send you into victim mode, like you say stuff like, my boss drives me crazy. My sister-in-law um, is really difficult to deal with. My superior makes me feel bad about myself. You're giving others power over you. No one has power over the way you think, feel, or behave. Changing your daily vocabulary is one way to recognize that choices you make are yours. So rather than saying, I have to work late today, Maybe you say to yourself, I'm choosing to stay late. There may be consequences if you don't work late, but it's still a choice. Empowering yourself it is an essential component to creating the kind of life you want to live. Don't give your power away. It's like me. I, I conditioned myself every day to say, I get to go to work, not I have to go to work. You think it happened overnight that I created that mindset? No. I had to say it out loud when I get up in the morning. I get to go to work today, not I have to go to work today. And last but not least of the do's and don'ts of being mentally strong in business, don't waste time feeling sorry for yourself. You know why? Because nobody cares. They're going to act like they do, but really, when you feel sorry for yourself, woe is me, nobody benefits, and it is self-destructive. It's futile to wallow in your problems, exaggerate your misfortune, and keep score of how many hardships you've endured. Whether you're struggling to pay your bills, or if you're experiencing a health problem, throwing a pity party only makes things worse. I want to tell you something. I recently had a full shoulder replacement. I'm even getting sick of complaining. <laughs> it's even messing with me here myself. Oh, my shoulder hurts. I got to quit doing it. So I, I'm trying to say to myself, it's getting better every day. Even through pain, I'm saying it's getting better every day because I'm sure people around me are getting sick of me having a pity party. What self-pity does is self-pity keeps you focused on the problem and prevents you from developing a solution. Hardship and sorrow are inevitable for all of us unless we live in a box. But ladies and gentlemen, feeling sorry for yourself is a choice. Even when you can't solve the problem, you can choose to control your attitude. So one of the things that I try to do when I'm bummed out about the pain I'm going through from my shoulder surgery, and as I talk to you, I've got a sling on to help relieve some of the pain, I try to find things I'm grateful for. 
So when I'm bummed out, I'm having a pity party, I stop myself. What am I grateful for? So then I say to myself, and I just said to Pat, the owner of Parkville Media, I said, you know, my shoulder's in a lot of pain, but we have a friend who their two-year-old goes to uh, Children's Hospital to get chemo treatments all the time. I got to put things in perspective. I'm grateful I'm not going to get chemo treatments. These are the type of things that you've got to be grateful for. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you, please, please, please subscribe to my podcast. I guarantee that you'll benefit from them. Subscribe, rate, and review. And remember, listen to these podcasts over and over. I only preach to you what I've been through. When I go speak to companies and their audiences, I only speak about my experience. So so if your company wants me, if you'd like me to come and speak to your company, I don't care if you have five people or 5,000, I'll create a workshop that will really benefit everybody. Check out my website at vandeep.com. If you see one of my books, you think that'll be helpful, order it. It's a two-day delivery. I'm grateful you were with me today on the do's and don'ts of being mentally strong in business. And keep doing the best you possibly can. I'm so grateful you tuned in. Have a great day. A Parkville Media Production.